Yeah, bang, bang, well. When Johnny Bindon got his jaw broke by Johnny Anlin down at uh, the club, Terry Downs' club, right, it wasn't a liberty. He'd done it because Bindon was taking the piss. And Bindon was taking the mickey out of uh, John, doing that down this club. You know, he's looking after the club. You don't start taking that, you put your party piece and flashing it around, you know what I mean? And then find a punch at John. John's only, you know, doing the right thing. Crash, hit him, broke his jaw, went on the floor, clumps here and there, not in the face, round the side, bump, 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 done his ribs and bits and pieces, yeah. So when Binham went to the hospital, um, Freddie Foreman uh, got to hear about it, um, went and see Binham, and wanted to know what it was all about, and Binham made it a little bit bigger than what it was, yeah. So now he's made it so busy, Freddie Foreman, because Freddie Foreman liked Bindon over the craze things years ago, bits and pieces, yeah? So, Freddie Foreman is not a man to muck about with, you know what I mean? He can't muck about with him, he's a proper, proper guy. He's a dangerous, dangerous man. Anybody read his book and then see what sort of guy this is, is, is a nutcase, yeah? But I know his son, Jamie. I know his son, Jamie, very well. There's a big story about me and Jamie. Anyway, so... He's now got young Freddie Foreman with Johnny Annan, right? So he's making his all busy, going around Labbert Grove, trying to find out where, where he lived. So now Johnny Annan gets to know that Freddie Foreman's looking for him. So now he's thinking, well, hold up. He's got to get himself prepared for when he comes around the house or tries to smash the door down and bits and pieces. So there's Johnny Annan or got all bits and pieces around the house waiting for it. And then he does come, Freddie Foreman comes, knocks on the door. Uh, he opens up, he says, look, I can't know where John, please. Goes in, but he don't come in by himself. He comes in free alleys. So, because he comes in free alley, Freddie Foreman, uh, Johnny Hannon now is thinking, hold up, it's a bit of a liberty, this, you know what I mean? So he's going to Freddie Foreman, look, me and you've tried to have a talk, Fred, but your people walk outside, mate. So Philip Foreman said, no, they wouldn't be there, they're going to cause no problems, they're just here. So now John Yannan knows that it's a problem, yeah. So Philip Foreman said to him, listen, you're taking liberties, right? You're going around taking the piss out of people, you're just best, you're just best him up by Johnny Bindon, he's a mate of mine, you've took right liberties. And then he explains to him what he'd done. So Freddie Foreman said, listen, you're out of order, right? You're out of order what you did, yeah? And all of a sudden he pulled out something, Freddie Foreman. And jo Johnny Allen's gone back like that. He fell over and Freddie, and then Freddie Foreman's on top of him, putting it to his nut, yeah? He went, listen, I've been told you're a bully. Bully by name and bully by nature. Yeah, is that your name? Johnny Allen the bully. So you're a bit of a bully boy, are you? So as he, what he said is that when he put it to him, put it on him, the, the, the thing, yeah, Johnny Allen, I reckon he pulled himself. I suppose he would do, in a way. And Freddie Foreman got up and said, listen, let me tell you something. If I hear any problems with Johnny Bindon again, we're coming for you. And next time we're coming for you, we ain't walking away empty-handed. Do you understand? They reckon... And then went like white as a ghost, yeah? You would do, wouldn't it? Come on, mate. But after that, right? After that, Annan has got courage, yeah? He's got courage, he's really pissed off, he can't believe what's going on. He gets a few people that he knows that can have a right terrible, terrible row, yeah? They go down a uh, Freddie Foreman's club or pub or whatever it was, yeah? And they go in there. And Freddie Foreman's in there, and he, he's Alan's gone. Listen, uh, Fred, let me have a talk to you, mate. He says, you know, because I'm not happy about you coming out of my house. Freddie Foreman now wants to have a row in the pub, but these people that John's with, they're heavy, mate, and they're all they're all thinged up. They're all waiting for it, yeah. They're all waiting for it. So he said, look, please, let's have a quick chat. So he went in the back with Freddie Foreman. Fair play to John. He could have knocked Freddie Foreman out there and then, and then slimmed in, so but Freddie had the fall. Fred was a good boxer, you know. Freddie Foreman could have a well. He's, he's a dangerous, dangerous man, you know what I mean? So John walks out the back with Fred. Evidently, he's supposed to have said to Freddie Foreman, listen, 
when you come to my house, right, it was out of order. Me and you were supposed to talk to each other, not just putting guns in people's mouths and all this, that and the other. Listen, I don't hold grudges as such, but I'll come down here to have a talk with you. If me and you got to have it, we can have it, yeah? But let me talk to you first and let's see how it goes, yeah? Evidently, he's supposed to say to him, look, I look after Terry Downs' his club. You know Terry Downs, right? He said, Terry Downs is fighting the boxer. He said, you know what he's like. He said, well, let me tell you what happened. I'm looking after the club. Bindon's already been in the club. Right, he comes back in the club. He starts doing a party piece, taking his trousers down, taking his, his man out and starts flashing it about. He said he took the right liberties. And then I've told him to put his trousers back on and he's trying to punch at me. He said, I've did, I ain't took liberties. I've hit him crash. I've hit him on the jaw. He's broke his jaw. He's broke his jaw. He said, that's you know, what actually happened. You know what I mean? Jaw, mouth open, shouted, mouth crashed, broke his jaw. He went on the floor. I gave him a few clumps. That was it. So he went to the hospital. He's in there a couple of days. And now you come around my house said that I took liberties. I don't take liberties. I wouldn't take liberties with John. John took liberties with me doing what he'd done. This, this club is Terry Downs' club. I'm looking after it for Terry Downs, yeah? Freddie Foreman and Terry Downs, believe it or not, didn't really, really get on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But Freddie Foreman said, listen, I'm going to forget this now. Forget that you even come down here. I want you to forget that I even come on your house. But let me say something to you. You don't touch Johnny Bindon anymore. You don't look for him anymore. You don't cause no problems with him anymore. Is that what we're going to, we're going to say? So John now says, yeah, I don't know problems as long as you don't come looking for me. You know what he's like, Bindon. He might come looking for me. He might try to stab me out. What am I supposed to stand there? So Freddie Foreman said, listen, he ain't going to do that. I'll make sure he don't do that, yeah? Anyway, it went sweet. So when Johnny Annis walks out there, like he feels, oh, yeah, a million dollars, you know, he's talked to him and it's all sorted. About a week later, Johnny Binden has gone back down to the club, Terry Downs' club. He's gone down there with some people to cause problems. But what he don't realise is that Johnny Annan has got to know that he's coming down there. And Johnny Annan now has gone down there with a few few of his people. And I'm not on about silly people. I'm on about proper people. He's gone down there with proper people. Proper people, like, I wouldn't even want to mention on my phone, yeah? But he's gone down there with proper people, waiting for Bindon to come. And all of a sudden, Bindon come to the door, right? He opened the door, Terry Downs. He said, do you sort of favour Bindon? Don't come in my pub, my club. Go away, yeah? He said, you're going to get really a piss off. Terry Downs used to have his square cigars. Always had a cigar in his mouth. Bindon, seriously, he put his towel between his legs and he went off down the alleyway because it was at the bottom, this club was at the bottom of an alleyway, yeah? He put his towel between his legs, bump, gone. Bindon, after that, didn't hear nothing about anything about John Yannon, yeah? But John Yannon used to take liberties with people. He used to take but it, it was called the bully, right? A lot of people said that he went into a pub uh, over, over Labbert Grove that way, uh, a big piano in there, smashed it up, threw it out the window or something with one hand. He, he, he didn't do that. But what he did do, he pushed the piano around the pub and smashed all the pub up, all the chairs, the tables, and the other, because he never had the money to buy a drink. And the publican said, look, I don't mind giving you a few drinks, John, but you're taking liberties now, mate, I can't give you no more drinks. John's gone mad, pushed the piano all around the pub, like a lunatic, shouting and screaming, all around the pub, smashed all the tables and chairs up, smashed the bar, side of the bar up, went mad glasses everywhere but the publican never nicked John never called the police or nothing right by Labbert police station it's Labbert Grove police station never called the police or nothing left John as it was everybody was petrified of John Yannon everybody 
was petrified. Around my manor, everybody was petrified. And then he come down to my club, as a just told you, and got Larry with my mates, and they got hold of me and I had to go and find him, have a talk to him, and left it at that, yeah? I wasn't fighting Johnny Annans, I wasn't fighting him, but he can have a right fight. He could really march on. And then he got big stories about um, him, Lenny McLean. You know, evidently he's supposed to have gone down Lenny McLean, a, a club or something, with Lenny McLean's there, and gone in there with a few people and put it on Lenny. And Lenny didn't want to know. That's what I was told. You know, but you can imagine, because when he put it on Lenny at that time, Lenny was about six, 16 and a half stone, and Johnny Hannon was about 19 stone, built like a brick shit house. Five foot eight, arms massive. He had, his arms had to be 24 inches, massive arms, short arm. And you can imagine, if a guy at that weight hits you on the chin, like he was built, he'd break you up, mate, he'd bust you. He would bust you up. Personally, myself, at that time, I feel that John Yannon would have beat Lenny, would have beat Warshaw. I don't know about Cliff Fields, I don't know about that, but he'd have beat them two, I feel, yeah. Um, he was a good boxer as well, you know what I mean? Dow Youth, go down to Dow Youth. I remember him uh, going down to Dow Youth um, and going down there. I, was, I went down there in my training, Johnny Whelan, yeah, and Georgia Whelan to go down there and spar with John John Stokes. Anybody know John John Stokes? He's well known in Labbert Grove, not in Hill. John John Stokes, he can have a right fight, John, good boxer as well. But I went down there from London Transport to go down there and, 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 and box John John Stokes, spar with John John Stokes. So I had a couple of rounds with John John Stokes, and you know I was supposed to be the up and coming heavyweight, yeah? I was, I was all right, man, I was proper. I was down at pro gyms all the time, Sparring down there, training down there. Anyway, you know, like it's like everything. And I was told that John Yannon was there, and he didn't get, he didn't, he didn't uh, get to ring me. As far as I know, I'd know he did because it's easy to combine, yeah. But he was there. Um, he got hold of Barry Murphy, and he got hold of Paul McDermott, and he said there was this geezer called Ray Hill. It was Israel and Paul McDermott and also Ernie Wise. And they, of course they know me. And they said, we well, up and coming, you know? His kid's up and coming. You know, he's like proper, you know? He ain't a bully. He's gonna up and coming every weight and he's gonna fight. He can have a white fight, mate. And Johnny Annan uh, wanted me bad, you know what I mean? But anyway, it never really happens. I mean, coming down Central Wine Bar, causing problems down there, this is all later on. This is the later thing, yeah? Uh, nothing really happened between me and him, but as I said, my mate Alec Jones, um, he had a fight with Johnny Bindon, with, uh, sorry, with Johnny, this is Johnny Allen, he had a fight with him, and, uh, and, and done him over the scrubs common. Whether or not, whether or not when he'd done him, Johnny Allen was finished, you know, he was like, at it, you know? But Alex was a proper fighter, Good boxer, mate, and we just punched him all around again. And you know, stopped Johnny Allen just stopped, didn't knock him out, but it stopped him, mate. You know, I mean, didn't knock him out. I just said, uh, I think Johnny Allen just had enough, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, so Bindon, he was a little bit of a troublemaker, Bindon, and Freddie Foreman, um, with Johnny Allen, he could have gone right and stuck there. He could have come, he, he, I mean, either Hannon could have come on and stuck. Or Freddie, Freddie would have come out stuck, yeah? Because, you know, you've got to remember you know, that Anlon can fight, mate. We know Freddie Foreman can have a right fight and he's very, very dangerous and he's well, well respected. But sometimes, uh, on the spur of the moment, it can kick off. And you got a guy like Johnny Anlon, 19 on stone, uh, built like a brick shit house and can bang. You know, you've only got to get one of them on the chin, mate. It's good night, big time, sorry if it says. But we know if he had done that, and then he knows that he'd have come on top. He knows that. He's not a fool. He's not a fool. Anyway, bang, bang, my old.
Alla bra, Slaje. Bye bye.